Good morning. Day 7 through the book of Luke, chapters 13 and 14. This morning, two sides of an argument. On the one side of the argument is the great cost of being a disciple. On the other side of the argument, remembering who you serve as an inducement to whatever sacrifice you've got to make to be on his side rather than on the other. Um, So the cost of being a disciple, Jesus begins uh, in today's reading by telling those who complained about the suffering of the Galileans and those in Siloam where the, the tower fell on a bunch of people. And he says, well, don't think that they were any worse sinners than anybody else unless you repent. Unless you are broken, my friend, you will perish in the same way. Unless you change your mind about your sin and humbly come to God, you will perish. Uh, I mean, quite strong words from Jesus. Uh, the barren fig tree, you know, God gives only so much time for a nation or a people, could be even an individual, to bear fruit. And if that fruit is not forthcoming, the time comes where the tree is cut down. Um, then a, a man comes to Jesus and says to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? Interesting question. And Jesus' answer is not universalism. It's not, don't worry, love triumphs in the end and everyone will be saved. No. What does he say? He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I said, you will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, but we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from east and the west, from the north and from the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed there are last who will be first and there are first who will be last. So Jesus says, you you Jews, particularly those of his generation who saw him eating and drinking with them and he was teaching in their streets, he said, a whole bunch of you are going to be thrust out of the kingdom and there are going to be Gentiles from all over the world, north, south, east and west, who are eating and drinking with Abraham, the one that you say you, you love and that you're his sons and you yourselves will be cast out. In chapter 14, he then speaks about the the ethic of the kingdom being completely different to the world when you give a feast invite the maimed the lame the blind the poor the outcasts those who can never invite you back to their house and your reward will be great in heaven i've always found that very challenging and then he, he tells the parable of that great supper that everyone is invited to But people are making excuses. I can't come because I've just been married. I can't come for this reason, that reason. And he gets angry, the master of the feast, the master of that house. And he then sends his servants out into the streets and the lanes of the city. And he says, I want you to bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And then that's done. And there's still room. And he says, now go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Now listen, that my house may be filled. There's the note of grace. There's the note of the goodness of God and the largeness of heart. God wants his house to be filled. And it is the stubbornness of man that refuses to come in. Jesus then makes probably the strongest of the statements that he makes this morning. And he says, if you want to come after me, if you want to be my disciple, you've got to hate your father and your mother your wife and your children, your brothers and your sisters. Yes, and you've got to hate your own life also. And if you don't do that, you cannot be my disciple. Now, what's he talking about? Obviously, in comparison with how much you are loyal to Jesus and how much you love Jesus, by comparison, as a sort of turn of speech, you are willing to turn your back on everything, including those who are most 
dear to you. You will choose Jesus over anyone who resists your faith. You will hate them and love Jesus. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You've got to count the cost. Before you begin building, you need to count the cost whether you can finish. So, this, this is like it's full, this today's reading of these warnings, these exhortations, this, the highness of the bar of what God calls us to if we're going to follow Jesus. And yet, woven into all of these statements of Jesus are two stories that then present, without an argument, just through a story, they present to us the other side of the argument, which is so compelling, so overwhelming, that it makes the sacrifice look easy, if you catch it. So let's read those two stories. The first one is in chapter 13, from verse 10. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and he said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, should she not be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. There we see the two parties in this whole argument. The world, the dignified, the powerful, and then the, the, the king of this upside-down, lowly kingdom. And we see them now at war. And you tell me, my friend, as you read that story, does your heart not leap at the goodness and power and courage and grace and compassion of Jesus the King? You see this man and you just think, you know what, if I've got to give up everything to follow him, to be on his side, I'll do it. Know who you serve. Similar story in chapter 14. Now it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him closely. And behold, there was a certain man before him who had dropsy who was um, paralyzed. And Jesus, answering, spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And he took him and healed him, and let him go. Then he answered them, saying, Which of you, having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him regarding these things. So I hope the picture of Jesus, not just his grace and his compassion, but his courage and his authority as he takes on these enemies and his complete command of every situation. He, he to me, he's the most compelling figure. He is the, the, this picture of this incredibly compassionate man who was the God-man, who loved people, who, who loved the downtrodden and who healed and who always had time for the humble. 
and yet who was not in the least intimidated by the most powerful and the most aggressive and always knew what to do and knew what to say and could silence anyone. The picture of this man, I tell you, I'm obsessed with Jesus. I have been for 24 years now, 23 years, and I still am. And all the cost of, you know, having to choose him above even family and to hate my own life and all of my own desires and be loose from the world and to face persecution and to publicly own Jesus when I need to and and to have to say no to certain desires that I have in order to follow him, in order to be a disciple, whatever it, co it costs me, whatever. You keep your eyes on this man, Jesus, this, the compelling person that he was. I see him in action and I just want to be with him. He's the one that I want to be with. Remember who you serve, my friend. And it'll help you. So God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.